Hey all the Zers coming at you with a preview of our upcoming Civ series, mainly because <laughs> I was trying to put together a TSL and Nubia decided to break everything, or the summer patch associated with Nubia decided to break everything. Let's not be technical, shall we? Things is broken, so I had a hell of a time trying to get a TSL together, so it's going to take a little longer, so bear with me. I will get a TSL going one of these days, but until now, I need something special and something different. We're going to Middle Earth. Yeah, Civ of the Rings, baby. We're going to have some Civ time. So who's going to be in Civ of the Rings? Let's talk. Uh, well, it's going to be Gondor. And with Aragorn the second. Return of the King. Grants an additional diplomatic policy slot, and any government gets the Dunedain Ranger as a scout replacement. Okay, cool. So kind of like Colombia plus a unique scout. Uh, Legacy of Numenor is Gondor's ability. Build all districts 25% faster. That's strong. That's strong. And plus one housing for walls in each variety. Also pretty cool. Uh, though that'll expire eventually once you can't get all the walls. I wonder if you get all the extra housing once you get public... Whatever the hell it is. Public service or something like that? Eh, we'll see. Anyway, unique unit. Guard of the Citadel. Unique replacement for the pikemen. Weak when attacking. Strong when defending. And bonus combat strength when fighting in districts. Go figure. Dunedain Ranger. A unique scout replacement that has a range attack and heals every turn. So this is kind of like the... Uh, the Inuit scout replacement, if you remember that mod from Civ 5. And unique ancient walls, kind of going along with the legacy of Numenor here. Unique replacement for ancient walls, costs no maintenance, and provides plus one culture per era past. Not too bad. Gets better with time. As do all things. Alright. Uh, who else is in Civ of the Rings? There'll be about ten Civs here. We'll be playing on a large map, FYI. We'll likely disable uh, Science Victory, because <laughs> ain't no one taking a journey through the West on my book. We either kill each other or learn to live together. No one's flying away. Anyway, Ozog the Defiler. And the goblins. Alrighty. What is his unique ability? Units within in range of three tiles of a city you captured get plus five combat strength. I can see that becoming very dangerous late game if he continually is successful. All units only use one movement point to pillage. Also kind of scary. Gain the warg pack unique unit after researching horseback riding. Alright. This is what makes goblins scary, I think. Receive a second unit. Whenever you train a regular infantry unit. Really? Melee or anti-cav? So, pikeman line or melee line. That's frightening. That's gonna be like Shaka all over again. Or one of your unique units. So, also the warg pack. Speaking of which... A unique horseman replacement that has a bonus against other cav units and is cheaper to produce. Goody. Yeah. Yeah. This is ugly early. Ugly early. And unique goblin replacement for the warrior yields gold from defeated enemy units. Also pretty cool. So stronger early. Probably, I don't know if it's going to be as strong as the Monty Warrior, but any early warriors are scary. Last but not least, a unique goblin replacement for the Granary. Grants a small amount of culture and faith whenever a unit is trained in the city. Okay, and you'll be doing a lot of that, given the Endless Hordes, so probably, probably pretty good. Probably pretty strong Civ there. Now we go to the Dwarves. There's three different Dwarven Civs. I don't know how it's going to balance out once I play, but hey, details, right? Mm, beverage. All right. Dying the second, Lord of the Iron Hills. All units receive double support bonuses. May declare war on anyone at war with their allies without warmonger penalties. Interesting. This is kind of like the uh, Gilgamesh's thing. One copy of strategic resources allows you to produce and purchase units requiring in any city. That's pretty cool. Baseline logistics. Not logistics. Uh, that late game militaristic policy, whatever it is. Or is that Kinemark policy, maybe? I don't remember. The one that lets you do this. Receives the Axe Thrower Unique Unit. Okay. Let's take a look. So, Dwarves in general. Units can move over mountains. So, mountains are no protection from these dwarfy little dudes. Mountains can be used for founding cities and building mine improvements. Sick. Building a mine has a chance to reveal a hidden resource or small amount of gold. That's pretty pretty strong. Now, the Guardian. Unique Dwarven replacement for the Swordsman. Okay. Plus four when fighting on hills or mountain tiles. Okay, that's not too crazy. As long as it's not stronger baseline. And Axe Thrower. This is what he gets. A unique replacement for the Archer. Slightly more expensive and with only one tile range, okay, but with a higher range and melee strength. Well, it depends how good that's going to be. Anyways, in the Dwarven Forge, a unique replacement for the workshop, cheaper to produce and provides bonus gold equal to adjacency bonus of the industrial district. Okay, so cheap workshops that give you gold. Neat. Alright, Durin, the founder. So again, all the dwarf stuff is baseline. His unique bit is founding a city claims all surrounding mountain tiles for that city. Gets a free builder. After researching mining, builders receive an additional charge. So this is kind of like China, more or less, except you get mountains 
and more dwarfy. So yay! Moving right along. Let's get the last dwarf sieve out of the way while we're here. Thror. Uh, all this stuff works out. But he's also the king under the mountains, so cities founded on mountains yield plus 20% gold. Ooh, that's a pretty big multiplier, come to think of it. And receive a great, an additional great work slot. Hopefully something that's flexible. That could be really strong. Plus two gold from international trade routes. So this is clearly the infrastructure dwarf. Fascinating. Okay. Now let's go back to where we were and hit the elves. Galadriel. Lady of the Golden Forest. Forests provide additional plus one appeal to all adjacent tiles. All cities start with a small amount of outer defense. There is no easy walk to freedom when you try to murder an elven city. Early on, at least. Uh, wood Elven Sanctuaries. All units can see and move through forests and jungle, which is interesting. So this is for the Sylvans. Uh, cities on tiles with charming appeal provide plus one culture. Oh, neat. And plus two on breathtaking. Plus one faith from forests. Makes sense. Uh, the Galadhirim Archer. Slightly stronger Sylvan replacement for the crossbow. Plus five in friendly territory. That would be brutal to attack into. Goddamn. Uh, elven Treehouse. Unlocks the builder's ability to construct an Elven Treehouse unique to the Sylvan Elves. Gives you plus one food and one culture. Okay, plus two of next to a river. Plus two faith, sorry, of next to a river. And additional food and culture as you advance through the tech and sieve tree. Oh, that could get really strong. Uh, can only be built on forests. No kidding. With at least charming appeal. Okay, and can't be adjacent to each other. Also acts as a fort. Wow, that is a hella strong improvement. If I do say so myself. Alrighty, moving on from the elves. Let's get to the other elves, shall we? Thranduil, the lord of Mirkwood. Plus five base for all ranged units, because why not? They're elves, right? Units in forest and jungle heal faster, and elven tree houses trigger a culture bomb. Scary. So again, all this is the same. Uh, the Mirkwood Sentinel is pretty much the same, except for the other one. And we're about good. Yeah, okay, fine. Nothing crazy there. Uh, and now we get to the fun stuff. Uh, we get to Saruman. Saruman. I miss Christopher Lee already. All right. Unique ability, the voice of Kurunir. All apostles gain heathen conversion, which is fascinating. I receive faith for clearing a barbarian camp. And spy level increased by one for offensive operations. Okay, so faith and spying. Neat. Uh, Isengard. Machine of War. Units may form cores and armies earlier. Cool. Build industrial zones and encampments as well as siege and support units 50% faster. That's pretty sick. Plus one size from strategic resources. Always nice. Not much, but always a nice boost. A Ballista, unique Isengard replacement for the Catapult, stronger on defense and slightly stronger at bombarding. So, strong early, obviously. And get that early siege done from your industrial zone and encampments. Cool. And Uruk Pit's unique replacement for the barracks. Uh, oh, barracks, but not, not encampment replacement. All units trained in the city don't lose strength when damaged. Oh, sick. That's like the old uh, Japanese Bushido from Civ 5. Then we have Sauron, the Dark Lord himself. Slaves to his will. No great generals, but receives a Nazgul unique unit. That's pretty sick. Number of Nazgul increases when you advance to the eras. I do like that a lot. Capturing a city grants an envoy. Also nice. Where the shadows lie. Units cost no gold to maintain. That is going to get better with time. As the late game unit uh, maintenance costs go up. Yours don't. The Mumak. Uh, Mordor heavy cavalry unit. Interesting. Heavy cav at siege tactics. Acts as a battering ram. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, Nazgul. We already saw talked about that. Heals 20 HP on kills, which is really nice. Uh, and then a Wasteland, a unique replacement for the encampment, does not require population to be built. So you can always drop an encampment, so they're probably cheaper to build. I like it. Alrighty, and then Theoden King is probably the last one we need to talk about. The Glorious Charge. All cav units push enemies back if they are victorious in combat. This is kind of like Poland's ability. Defenders that cannot retreat suffer additional damage, so this is basically Poland's uh, Husaria. Husaria. Now let's speak not half English, half Polish, shall we? Alright, plus food and production yields... Oh, sorry, plus food. Food and production yields increase by 50% for 15 turns after liberating a city. Okay, so smacking of the uh, Colombian thing a little bit. Fascinating. And Australia, too, actually. Lands of the Horse Lords is for Rohan in general. Farms by plus one production if next to a pasture. And plus one food if next to a camp. Okay, gotcha. Pasture trigger culture bombs. Okay, so kind of like Oz. Uh... Yes, kind of like Oz. I think kind of like Oz, yeah. Plus a moon for cavalry units. Very nice. Uh, Rohirrim Rider, big surprise. Unique Rohirrim replacement for the knight. A light cav, so it's not longer a heavy cav like the knight is, that can build certain improvements and is significantly stronger than the knight. Oh, slightly stronger, okay. Yeah. We get a unique replacement for the stable. 
Built in the city center, interesting. Provides one copy of horses, wow, okay. As well as plus one gold to all pastures. That's pretty cool. So you'll guaranteed to have horsemen as Theoden, because if you didn't, that would be kind of silly. So we're not sure who we're going to play here uh, for our Civ of the Rings journey, but that's coming up next. And then after that, hopefully the TSL, if, you know, Fraxis doesn't bring out another patch that wants to break everything. So, till that time, I've been Urs, and I'll see you all next time on the joy that is Civ 6. Till next time, till then.